Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go over setting up Pi Hole on a Raspberry Pi. First, we're going to get our Raspberry Pi set up with Raspbian. We're using Raspberry Pi Imager on the Mac. They have Raspberry Pi Imager for Windows, Mac, or Linux. So go ahead and download whatever flavor uh, fits your fancy. We'll go ahead and choose the recommended Raspbian and then put it on our SD card, which there we go. Maybe. Yep. And then we'll go ahead and write to it. This will take a little bit, so uh, we'll allow all of the permissions and then it's going to go ahead and write. Like I said, this does take a little bit, so I'll catch up with you after this has written out. So we're back. We're ready to go. It has imaged the uh, SD card, but before we remove it, which it probably has already been removed. Um, we'll go quick jump out into Finder. And nope, we have it. Uh, we still have the imager. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the SD card out and put it right back in. Because I want to turn on SSH before even boot up. So what we're going to do to turn on SSH is we're going to go ahead and... We're in this boot directory right now. And what we want to do is create an empty file. So what I'm going to do is actually open a terminal window. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to change directory into volumes, boot. And then we'll go ahead and do a list or ls. And we're going to access the files and then we can see everything that's on the boot disk and what we're going to do is we're going to do sudo touch ssh and then we'll type in our password and as you can see there's just a, a file there ssh what that has done is put the ssh file on our boot drive and when the raspberry pi boots up uh, SSH will be enabled and then they'll re it'll remove the file knowing that we need to get into SSH. So we'll go ahead and eject the boot. First, we got to close our terminal window and then we can go ahead and eject boot. We'll remove, we'll get rid of Raspberry Pi imager, take our micro SD card out. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the Raspberry Pi, let the Raspberry Pi boot up and then we'll SSH into that Raspberry Pi. So hold on. All right. I was going too fast. What we needed, we needed to wait a while longer. Now we're logging in with the uh, bare minimum credentials. So the username is Pi PI and the password is Raspberry. And we are in. What, we're, what we do want to do is change the default password for the Pi user. So we're already logged in as Pi, and what you can what you see here is they want you to go ahead and type passwd uh, to set a new password. So we're gonna hit passwd. Our current password is Raspberry, and the new password is something secure that you want to set it to. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it to my secure password, and the password's been updated. So we're good to go. We're in, and now what we need to do is we need to go out to our out to pi hold we can google search it a second and we want to go ahead and not give it our location but install it's going to bring us out to github we're going to go ahead and do the one step automated install if you're uncomfortable uh running and piping bash right in there feel free to run these other options if you want, I can make a video showing you how to go through those other options. Essentially, just run each command um, on a separate line, and you can always go in and take a look at your bash script if need be. Right now, we're going to go ahead and just do the automated install on this Raspberry Pi. I'm comfortable piping bash. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll copy and paste it in, and it's going to start to run don't worry about the root privileges aspect. We are a root user who has pseudo uh, privileges. So 
at this point we can go ahead and and know that uh, we have the privileges to run everything we need to run in this script. So as you can see, we're in the process of upgrading the packages we need on our Raspberry Pi. And it's dumping us into the Pi installer. It's going to take a little bit to install packages, and then it's going to ask us questions about how we want our Pi hole set up. Um, again, I will catch you back when we need to start setting up the Pi hole, um, as this does take a little bit of time. All right, we're in, and we're going to hit return on our keyboard to say OK. We're going to we're going to turn our Raspberry Pi into a network wide ad blocker. Uh, they're just letting you know Pi Hole is free, but you can go ahead and donate at piehole.net slash donate. And then Pi Hole is a server. I have gone ahead and set a static address in Unify. At this point, you could go ahead and also give it a static address in Unify. You will be setting a static address on the Pi itself as well. So hit again, hit OK and it's going to ask what the DNS provider we want to use is. We're going to go ahead and use OpenDNS. And then I'm going to go ahead and allow it to use all of these different third-party lists. Feel free to go ahead. I'll leave all of these lists in the description. Feel free to look through those lists. These are the lists that block ads and other junk that you don't want on your network. I suggest leaving them all. If you know you don't want one, you can go ahead and you can scroll down and you can use spacebar to turn it off. You can use spacebar to turn it back on. We'll hit tab because we'll leave them all and then return to hit OK. I'm going to go ahead and turn off IPv6 as IPv6 is not on on my Unify network. If it's on on yours, go ahead and block it. OK. And then this is a yes. We want the static address to be 10.2 24. If you go over to no, you can go ahead and change your address if if you wanted it to be something different than what say you you started it up in it got a DHCP address. You wanted to move it into your static range. Go ahead and set your static address. Then as it reboots, it's going to request that address from Unify or whatever your router is and then go into your router and make sure you also set the address in your router. So we'll hit tab and OK. And again, this is our default gateway for this network. So hit OK. And yes, we want to go ahead and install the admin interface. Yes, we want to be able to get in there. Um, we also want the server, the web server, and we want to log the queries. We're going to go ahead and show everything. If you have privacy concerns, you can turn on um, anonymous no mode or go ahead and disable any st statistics. We want to see everything at this point. And it's going to go ahead and go through the process of pulling down PyHole from GitHub and then making sure everything gets set up appropriately based on all of the decisions we've gone ahead and chosen. As you can see, it's pulling all its dependencies down. And at the end here, it's going to let us know that it has set up our web server and it will give us a password to log in. Here we go. Have our installation complete. We want to copy our login password. But first we need to, I'm going to go ahead and reset that password as there's no way in the world I'm going to remember that password. So to do that, we'll hit OK. And now in our SSH window, right from this location, we'll go ahead and type in piehole dash A dash P. A is admin, P is for password, and then we'll go ahead and hit return. We're going to enter a new password, something that is secure. It can be the same thing as your Raspberry Pi password. It can be something totally different. Um, And then we'll confirm that password. And new password's been set. So we are going to go out and go to our IP address. So we'll go ahead and open a new 
window here and we'll go to 192.168.10.2 and it's going to say hey did you mean to go to the admin panel and we can go ahead and click that link because yes we did and here is our admin panel but the dashboard while it's nice to look at is not what we're looking to get into so we'll go ahead, go ahead and log in and now we know our password and we can go ahead and hit log in. You can also remember me if you want to, but we are into Pi-hole. Um, we can see we have one client. Let's go in and see who's our client. And right now it's just localhost, which is the Raspberry Pi here. Um, we want to go ahead and make sure that um, all devices go ahead and use it. Right now, we're just gonna go ahead and set up the Mac to um, use our Pi Hole as our DNS service. So we'll go into System Preferences and Network. And then over Ethernet here, I'm gonna actually make sure we disconnect from Wi-Fi um, as that's an entirely different network. And we'll go in Advanced and DNS, and then we can go ahead and change our DNS server to 192.168.10.2, and hit OK, and then we'll go, we'll open another terminal window, and we'll do an NS lookup for google.com. And as you can see, we have google.com, and uh, we'll do another NS lookup for Facebook.com. Mm, one piece I didn't do is we needed to hit apply because as you can see in our terminal window, um, right now the server that it's hitting is 10.1. So I forgot to hit apply, we'll hit apply and then we'll rerun. And now you can see our servers 10.2. And again, for Facebook, it's trying to run. And yep, and then we have Facebook at 10.2. So if we go back here, you can see we have two clients running. If we go into our query log, you can see we just, from our MacBook Air here, hit Facebook. Um, but let's say we... Uh, we want to block Facebook. We can go ahead out here and we will add a domain of facebook.com. Right now, if I go facebook.com, it's going to get right there. So we're going to close that and we'll add it as a regex. We'll open Safari and we'll go out to facebook.com. And as you can see, Facebook is now blocked. If we were to go back into Pi Hole and remove Facebook and went to our dashboard and then went back out here and we refreshed the page, now we can get back to Facebook. So we know Pi Hole is working and blocking whatever we wanted blocked. It's currently blocking things for us, but what we need to do is go ahead and block it network wide. So now we'll jump into Unify and I'll show you how to block it on Unify and set DNS for all different devices. So let's get in and we'll go to our networks and we're gonna go ahead and we'll get out of there. And then for now, we'll go ahead and we'll make sure we're blocking everything on our office network so we'll hit edit we are going to go off our auto dhcp name server it is a little confusing that it's called a dhcp name server and our dns server is 192.168.10.2 or whatever your static address of your pie hole is so we'll go ahead and hit save and to see that in the new settings We'll go and try new settings and we go into our networks, local networks, and then our office one 
we'll go ahead and do the same thing on office guests so we'll hit edit and we don't want dhcp name server we want manual and then we want 192.168.10.2 and we'll go ahead and apply changes and at this point our office guest is going to be blocked if we want to do it on iot junk we have to allow just our raspberry pi or pie hole to get through to that network if you guys want to see that video i can go ahead and show you a video of how to just let the pie hole through at a later point um but at this point I just want to show you how to get pie hole set up on unify so what i'm going to do is go back into system preferences on my macbook and in advanced and dns and we're going to just get rid of that hit ok hit apply and we're going to double check office here and you can see 10.2 is our dns server and i'm going to go ahead and disconnect ethernet so it gets an updated ip address with updated dns so as you can see disconnected reconnected and as you can see our dns server is 10.2 and so now we'll go back out to our pie hole admin console we'll blacklist uh you know what i'm google's been been watching so many things we'll go ahead and block google for the time being because we can always use duck duck go so we're blocking it we're going to go out here and we're going to go to google.com and it's blocked network wide no matter what device is on that network it's going to be blocked so at this point you can play with your lists you can see what it's blocking if it's blocking things that you need you can always go in and say hey i only you know i need this for need to get these things for the next five minutes you can go ahead and say disable for five minutes and now it's going to do a countdown of five minutes and stop blocking everything if you it was faster than that you can go ahead and just hit enable again you have all of these different tools to audit things and see what's going on. So the other upside is, is you can go out and see if you run this on a company network, you can see who's doing what and potentially wasting time. You can block Facebook, YouTube, all of these different things that you may not want hap happening on your network. Um, we could go ahead and automate it that says at lunchtime, we'll open up these things. Um, there's all kinds of different ways you can use Pi-hole. Um, I hope this helps you out and helps you get set up with Pi-hole on Unify. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out. If you've liked this video, um, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. Also, if you're interested in this type of content or anything related to um, networking or mac os or managed services click the bell icon for notifications on when i post more content i'm working on getting as much out as i possibly can while also keeping my business rolling and if you would like any uh, help with consulting any it management services feel free to reach out to me through my website at frogtech.com uh, we're always here to help with any mac os networking or any possible tech related thing that your your company may need we're always up for a challenge and we're always learning new and great things so uh, this is again david with frog tech signing off and we'll see you in the next one thanks